Oh, this video is sponsored by Costco. Just kidding, no, it's not. I bought this yesterday. I'm going to be talking about things that surprised me after I became a music major. So I've been in college for like probably two months now. I'm a freshman. This is my first semester ever. I just have my little thing here of things that surprised me after becoming a music major. <laughs> so I'm in a practice room right now and there's like people outside. So it just weirds me out when they like look at the window because they're like, what is she doing? I almost fell off the chair. So, um, things that surprised me. Number one. As a freshman music major, you aren't expected to have this giant repertoire of like crazy advanced stuff. Like they don't expect you to have that. I'm not saying like you can come in like intermediate. Like you need to be a bit more advanced obviously to be a music major, but you don't need to have like this large crazy repertoire. You know, you just need to have pretty much the basics down. I remember when I was like filling out application stuff for all the schools, all the schools asked for like my repertoire, the stuff that I already learned. And they of course asked you only put down the repertoire that's actually like like notable, I guess. Basically the more advanced stuff. And so I had like 15, 10 pieces on there. I can't remember exactly. And I was like, wow, I have like nothing on there. So I was like, there's no way I'm going into get I'm going to get into any college. If you are like filling out your application form and you're like, oh, I don't have a lot of good pieces on here, like there's no way they'd pick me. Anyways, the point is don't worry too much about that. They understand, well they should understand in my opinion. You're a freshman, you came fresh out of high school. You're not gonna know like every single piece in existence. You don't have time to learn it because you're only a freshman. So basically you just need a good foundation and they will work with that, work on that with you and you like progress from there, you know? Anyways, I hope that makes sense. Basically, you're not expected to have this giant repertoire. Of course you need advanced repertoire, but it doesn't need to be like the level of someone who's gotten their doctorate, okay? Like you're not expected to have that. I don't know why I thought I was, but you're not expected to have that. You're expected to do 24 hours a week of practice. So for me, I practice six days a week because the buses don't work on Sundays and I don't live on campus. So I can't really come to music building on Sundays. So I practice six days a week, so basically four hours a day. That's not something I was used to. I'm used to practicing one hour a day. So that was like basically going from seven hours a week to 24 hours a week. That just kind of shocked me because I was like, oh, I had no idea I'd be practicing that much, which is crazy because it makes sense. You're a music major. You're there to practice and like be a musician. So like it makes sense to practice that much, but that just shocked me. This third one that kind of goes along with that is even though like it is practicing a lot, it's not as crazy practicing as most people say. Of course, this could vary between like what instrument you're majoring in. So as a harpist, you know, we have to do 24 hours a day, but I'm not sure if it's the same for like a violin or flute or something because I feel like those are a bit more competitive. Not that harp isn't competitive, but it's definitely a smaller circle. People who play like violin, piano, or flute, you know, there's so much more people there, so it makes it more competitive, if that makes sense, you know? I always heard stories of people like practicing at midnight and like cram practicing and like basically never leaving the practice room and just going crazy so i was like oh dang that's gonna happen to me probably but it hasn't like i'm only in there four hours a day actually i'm in there probably five hours a day because i try to get in more practice i'm not always in the practice room i have time to go out like make friends i have time to like do my homework and do my schoolwork. i feel like it's just if you're organized even though i am practicing a lot my life isn't consumed by practicing <laughs> So the fourth thing is that people here, they want you to succeed. At the same time, this could just be because I am a harpist. As you hear like scary stories of like violins or like flutes. I can't think of any other instrument right now, but like those more like, like with more people in it, people tend to like could be like more competitive and be like, you're my competition. Like I'm going to beat you. I don't know if that's true and I hope it's not true, but like that's just what I've heard. And so going into the music program, I was like, oh man, I feel like it's going to be hard to be friends with like the other harpists there because we're like trying to <laughs> be better than each other. I don't know. It's literally not like that. I've never been in an environment that's so like encouraging and welcoming. Like literally every master class, everyone is there to like support you and they want you to do well in master classes you'll perform for like the rest of the studio and then people will give you feedback you know everyone is there to help you like they're giving you constructive criticism like actually good tips to help you improve because they want to see you improve and like that just shocked me how like everyone actually wants you to succeed it's a great environment like it's not as toxic as i thought it would be because you just hear scary stories about like the violins and <laughs> it's not really like that. And if it is like that, that is really sad. I would suggest switching to another university because it really shouldn't be something that pushes you down. Like studying music in college should be something that like really uplifts you and makes you improve, not makes you self-cautious and like lose your confidence, you know?
Just like how you might watch another harpist and be like, or whatever. You might watch another harpist be like, oh dang, their scales are amazing. I wish I could play my scales that evenly, that beautifully, you know? Such great tone and presence. Like, I wish I could do that. And you might be like, wow, they're better than me. But like, on the flip side, that person's probably looking at you and be like, wow, she has such a good tone in her lower register. I wish I could play with that much presence in bravado, you know? I'm using random words. <laughs> like, they wish they could do that as well as you do. So like, the point is, everyone has something they're strong at and everyone has something they're weak at. So don't be ashamed if you're weak at something, but don't be cocky if you're good at something. Everyone has their strengths and weaknesses and we're just... <laughs> There's always someone out there. Everyone has their strengths and weaknesses and we're all here studying together to help each other improve. <laughs> Understand that you were accepted, you belong there, they want you there. I wish I knew this and I wish I did this, but I didn't. Live close to the music building, okay? I don't live on campus because I live with my sisters, so I basically have to take a bus every day to get to campus and then I have to walk from the bus stop to the music building. It's overall, it takes like 10 minutes to get to school, which I guess if you have a car, it's not bad, but I don't have a car. I'm walking. So like just now, it was raining and I came here in the rain, freezing, and so I get to the practice room. My hands are cold and I'm like, ooh, I gotta warm them up before I start practicing because I don't like hurt myself. Anyways, live near the music building. It'll save yourself so much like unnecessary pain. <laughs> My feet hurt all the time because of how much walking I'm doing because it's like half of it's uphill and I guess it makes me strong but it sucks. I would just suggest living near the music building. Practice in your harp shoes. And I get it, it's tedious to like change every time you practice going to your harp shoes to practice, but it really helps because I kind of noticed that when a lot of people don't practice in their harp shoes, they move the pedals differently. And I feel like if you are always practicing in your harp shoes, you will be more efficient overall. If you have harp shoes, I don't have them on right now. So this is like a terrible example. They're in my backpack, but I haven't started practicing yet. So if you have harp shoes, you are able to keep your heel here and like push it like this because you will be able to, you know? But if you don't, it's kind of harder, so then people tend to just like lift their heel and push them like this. And that is not efficient. I would suggest practicing in your harp shoes, making it a habit, so that way you don't develop that habit of lifting your foot up and using your knee to like <laughs> push down the pedals. Something new that I learned, something that I wish I knew before ever moving the harp. If you already knew about this trick, then wow, good job. Your life is easy. But I didn't know about this trick, and so I struggled every single time I moved the harp, and yeah, it was a struggle. So basically, when you take the harp and you move it with the dolly, right? Pretty heavy as it is, you're moving the harp with the dolly, it's rough, it's a struggle, but you also gotta carry your bench. And if you pull up bench like this, it's pretty nice. So I, ow, that hit my face. I used to walk around like this and carry the harp like that, right? Check out what blew my mind. Take the squishy side, put this against the harp, and slide it inside of here. Then I can use two hands when moving the harp, and I'll have this thing like dangling beside me, making me extra fatigued. And that's how you move the harp and the bench in one go. Blew my mind. I've never seen this done before. All the harpists here do that, and I was mind blown. This is probably the most important thing I've ever learned here. Just kidding, just kidding. I learned other important things, but this is definitely like one of the most life-changing things I learned after coming here. Anyways, so thanks for watching, guys. I hope that these things kind of help becoming a music major feel more real to you, because I know that when I was looking up what it's like to be a harpist or like study harp in college or university, I had no idea. It felt so unreal. Like, it was some like weird dream that was like, it would never happen. And so I'm just hoping that these videos kind of help make it seem more real and more attainable, like something you can actually do if you work for it. Yeah, hopefully this video helped and maybe made you feel a little more confident and better about becoming a music major. Or maybe made you decide, I don't want to be a music major. Like if you're like, yeah, that's not for me, cool. But if you want to be a music major, I really hope this video helped. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video, which I'm actually going to be recording right after this. So I'm going to be wearing the same Kirkland thing because you know Costco is sponsoring me. Just kidding. Thank you.